that indeed it was a settlement. Peter C. Harvey never handed down a final ruling. There were obviously a lot of negotiations going on. Are you surprised at the number of games and the number of the fine? Well, I don't think anybody had 11 in the lottery, right? It was always 10, 12, 8. I don't know how they came to 11. Plus we were on even numbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, hey, it could have been a lot worse based on the report from Sue Robinson and, and the, 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 the comments from Roger Goodell that he wanted to see him out for the whole year. So I think the Browns uh, squeaked by this thing to get him six games rather than five, which everyone kind of expected as a compromise. I think the Browns feel a little bit better about the season going ahead. So, Gerard, nobody got what they wanted. I mean, really, the ultimate thing, Deshaun Watson didn't want any games, right? He doesn't think he did anything wrong. The NFL wanted the full season. It's a negotiation. And what did you think of the ruling? Well, what I thought was whoever negotiated for the contract for the game against the Texans and the Browns got what they wanted <laughs> because you couldn't have planned it even better for them. But I wonder, though, had that game with the Texans been on the ninth week of the season as opposed to the 12th week where we had a different outcome in regards to the ruling and what that entails? Well, for the longest time, I kept hearing everyone say, well, the NFL does not want Deshaun Watson to go back to Houston and play. And it turned out it was a non-issue at all. And you're saying they probably did for the higher ratings, right? That's exactly what point. I'm saying. Yeah. So his first game back will be in December when the Browns traveled to Houston to take on his old team, the Houston Texans. Can you believe the road we have traveled down to get to this point today? Follow along. January 2021, he wants to be traded from Houston. March 11th, 2022, no indictment from a grand jury. March 18th, 2022, the Browns, Texans, and Watson all come together on a trade and a $230 million guaranteed contract, a record setter. March 29th, Sue L. Robinson is going to hear the case. On June 21st, Watson settles 20 of the 24 lawsuits against him, and there has been more work done on that. There is still only one pending. August 1st, six-game suspension, no fine from Sue L. Robinson. 48 hours later, the NFL announces they will appeal that, and here we are today with the 11-game suspension. Now let's get to Deshaun Watson. It's important as you listen to his comments, and this is the first time we've heard him since June in minicamp. He again says he did nothing wrong. He stands by his innocence. There is an apology for the situation and the hysteria and the chaos and the pain that it has brought about. But he still maintains he did nothing wrong. So here he is. I've always uh, stood on my innocence and always said that I've never assaulted anyone or disrespected anyone, and I'm continuing to stand on that. But at the same time, I have to continue to push forward with my life and my career. And for us to be able to move forward, you know, I have to be able to take steps and put pride to the side. And uh, I'm going to continue to stand on my innocence and, and, and keep pushing forward. And I've always, you know, stood on not disrespecting or sexual assaulting anyone. All right, your immediate reaction to the body of his press conference today I don't think he helped himself. No, I don't. And, and I think that uh, people will remember, uh, p people that who aren't Browns fans will remember his words more than anything, that he did nothing wrong, he's standing by his innocence, and it's hard to justify <laughs> after uh, the report, an 11-game suspension, $5 million fine, and he did nothing wrong. Gerard, he says he wants at some point in time to be able to tell his own story, and then that would prove his innocence. But let's go back to my initial question. What did you think about his comments? Uh, I thought that the comments were basically this. He's in a situation where a lawsuit is still pending. He has to still be careful with his words. He can appease us by saying he's sorry because that's what a lot of people in this camp and in his ear are telling him to say is that you're sorry, but there's still a legal ramifications involved with this case that he can't be completely who he probably wants to be and say what he really wants to say Jim now let's go over his timeline in the suspension it begins the week of the first game of the regular season and then come October by October 10th he would be eligible to come back to the Browns facility if he follows all the programs that they are saying that he must be involved in and succeed in November 14th he could return to practice December 4th, he is eligible to play against the Houston Texans. By the time he returns on December 4th, it would mark 700 days 
since the last time he played in a regular season game. Now, we saw him play last Friday, mm. and he looked rusty. Yeah. So he's going to get even more time off right now. Would you immediately play him once again? Well, that timeline shows he'll have three weeks of practice prior to his first game. Uh, and I think that's a huge break that the Browns and Watson received in this. It's, it's not like he's going to walk off a suspension and into a game. He'll be practicing for three weeks. And obviously, where Jacoby Brissett's at in the process, where the record is at with his team, and what that entails is going to have an impact on that. But I would imagine he's going back to Houston, where he's going to get that greater even booze and all the negative yeah. things that you saw in Jacksonville right. take place. It's going to be magnified by a 1,000 in Houston. So you'd be not surprised if he does come out the gate, if he does play, being nervous. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he handles this. Because I think he was last Friday night yes, in Jacksonville, certainly. and you were right there on the sideline. He is not going to play Sunday in the game against the Eagles. Okay, Now, he can play if mm -hmm. they wanted to put him in there. He's not going to play in the game. He is not going to play against the Bears in yeah. the final preseason game. Yeah, but what surprised me today is he got a lot of practice time today. Got a lot of snaps. And I was uh, Kevin Stefanski said prior to practice, he's going to start easing off of him and working on the side and yet today he was as prominent uh with the ones and twos as any other day i don't I, i'm confused by that well it doesn't surprise me because even though he may be suspended they're still making a statement that this guy is our future he is our now though we have to wait 11 games for that to transpire and take place so i get why they're playing him and also too you're not going to put him with the twos and the threes offensive line if you're not going to play your starters on on sunday and saturday so i get totally why they're doing what they're doing but also for his sense of confidence let him go out there and see that you still have nfl capability that's why they're playing them okay we've heard from deshaun watson now for the first time since training camp has started we'll hear from the haslams and andrew berry the bronze general manager on how they feel this thing went would they still make this trade if they knew it was going to be this way 11 games five million dollars and everything else that has gone along with it and are the browns okay right now at quarterback do this all over again. absolutely hey. so you have no qualms about making someone a questionable character in the face of your franchise you know I, here's what i think is that um i think in this country and hopefully in the world people deserve second chances okay i really think that and I, I, I struggle a little bit. Is is he never supposed to play again? Is he never supposed to be part of society? Does he get no chance to rehabilitate himself? And that's what we're going to do, okay? And you could say, well, that's because he's a star quarterback. Well, of course. But if he was Joe Smith, he wouldn't be in, in the, on the headlines every day. So we think people deserve a second chance. We gave Kareem Hunt a second chance, okay? And that's worked out pretty well, okay? We're hoping this will work out, and we have strong belief it will. That doesn't mean we don't have empathy for people affected, and we will continue to do so. But we strongly believe, strongly believe people deserve a second chance. We believe Deshaun Watson deserves a second chance. So there they are. Andrew Berry, along with Dee and Jimmy Haslam. You mentioned that Dee Haslam kept pointing out a number of times. Remember, counseling is a process. But Jimmy Haslam was firm. One word answer. Would you still make the trade? Absolutely. Yeah. And I asked them directly, did you expect as much this all to happen after you traded for him? Were you expecting 11 games and all this hassle and all this time? And, uh, you know, you kind of dodged that question. But I think I think to sum it up, they're, they're more relieved that this thing is now a little more clear to the team and to the head coach. The other thing they really wanted you to, you know, take a look into the future. He's going to be our quarterback for a long time. Yes, this year, not so much. But after that, once this is over, as Tony mentioned, he's going to be here a long time. Right. And they did the cost-benefit analysis. They understand that something negative was going to take place, that there would be blowback for making this decision to sign Deshaun Watson. At the same time, as you just alluded to, Jim, three years from now, two years from now, heck, this season, if and when the Browns make a Super Bowl and win one, this will all be forgotten, and it will be one of those footnotes in a – situation where we've seen it time and time again where a guy who's has issues but he comes back and becomes a winner we forget it and we move on in the last week or so it seems as though it's worn on them a little bit not knowing what's going to happen now it's it's there they know what's going to happen yeah i i think it, it wore on one person more than any and that was the head coach who was trying to juggle alternative plans what about this what about that 
if this comes, what do we do then? Now he knows. I thought he seemed a bit, uh, he admitted it. Uh, he felt relief today to know exactly now which plan the coaches can pursue. Right, he should feel relieved. It's a distraction. Call it what it is. That's a distraction with a capital D. You don't know when the guy is going to be available. You're trying to plan around when you're going to give other guys reps and opportunities to prove themselves. And you have a question mark at the quarterback position with a guy you signed for $230 million not being involved. So, yes, I have clarity now on how I can orchestrate my practices and also how I'm going to call plays as an offensive coordinator slash head coach. Okay, here he is, Kevin Stefanski, on the Watson ruling today. Now that we have certainty, I, I feel good about where we are. Uh, I feel good about getting those guys ready to play because ultimately, like you mentioned, uh, when Deshaun is back and ready to play, uh, we're excited about that opportunity for him. Uh, but there was a lot of work that needs to go in prior to uh, September 1st. There he is, the Browns head coach. All right, Kate, let's go now to what reality is. Jacoby Brissett's the starting quarterback for the Browns. Is he still the starting quarterback for the Browns? I mean, do you feel, now that they know it's 11 games, it's not six, it's not eight, it's 11 games, that's a long run. I thought both Andrew Berry and Kevin Stefanski reasserted their confidence today in Jacoby Brissett. Uh, my question is, what's their confidence level in Josh Dobbs as the backup now, one, one play away from going in there? And I think if the Browns pursue other quarterbacks, it would be with that in mind rather than replacing Brissett as the starter. I would agree with you on that. Go ahead, I, agree with that. I agree with that assessment as well, but I also know this. If Jacoby performs well during these two practices against the, well, now one, against the Eagles, he's not going to play any preseason games. That's going to help his cause. But if we see some struggle during these practices early on, do not be surprised if you all of a sudden hear the wranglings of, a Jimmy Garoppolo again because 11 games is a mighty long time in the National Football League and you can truly fall behind. Well, we asked Deshaun Watson today about his teammates and the situation the Browns are left in because of his suspension. I mean, it's a tough situation, but at the end of the day, I have to continue to make sure that I'm around as much as possible as I can be um, and just continue to put in the work and let, you know, support the guys that's around, uh, support this team. You know, I know these guys are going to do very, very well. We're all professionals. We all here for to do a job and uh, to accomplish a goal, and that's win games. And uh, I know the guys in that locker room are going to do that. Well, here's my thinking now. We really have to get a good look at Jacoby Brissett. We need to see Brissett more. It is amazing, something you brought up earlier in the show, how much Watson was in there yeah. again today. And I'm not sure that's going to bear any fruit on what's going to happen for this season. If you're really committed to Brissett, then for heaven's sake, get him in there. If reps are so precious, and I think you you feel as a player they were, did. right? Then why are you wasting them right now? This guy's not going to be playing until December. Yeah. Yeah, man, I could say the same thing about Josh Dobbs. I mean, he needs the reps, too. And he, it seemed like he, he was third fiddle today behind Watson and him behind Brissett. So maybe we'll see a, shift, a, a, a more definitive shift tomorrow. You know, maybe they didn't know this ruling was coming down when they plotted today's practice True. routine. Yeah. And so maybe that changes tomorrow. I'll be looking for that. Actually, I think inside the building, a lot of them thought yesterday was going to be the day. But you're right. When they made this plan, they absolutely didn't think it was coming down. Go ahead, Gerard. Yeah, ultimately, I think what they're trying to do is show Deshaun, we support you. We're going to sacrifice reps to show you how much we support you and are we engaging with you. Now, obviously, it's going to be a transition that's going to take place where Jacoby will obviously get the nod and be the guy and we'll move forward from there. But the, Do they really need to do that after a $230 million guaranteed yes. contract? Yes, it's, we are very temperamental when I say we as football players. <laughs> Our egos and what we need in order to feel like they're committed and granted, you're right, $230 million should say it and speak for itself, but there is something to be said about in the midst of all this, they're still letting me go out there and show these guys that I am the focal point of this offense and this team and as a face, even with all the adversity that's taking place. Welcome back, everybody. Training Camp Daily presented by 7 Up Rolls Along. Our Browns one-on-one -on -one interview today. Browns middle linebacker Anthony Walker. Good to see you. Big days coming up here no starting doubt. today, tomorrow, and then Sunday. But today and tomorrow against the Eagles, these are regarded as real core days in this camp. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think joint practices has really taken place of uh, like a preseason game. Um, you get a lot of game reps, game-like reps, uh, you know, a lot of – a lot of good work between two good teams. Um, we're excited, man. It's going to be great competition, and 
know, so it'd be fun. Why do you think that has become across the landscape of the NFL now that the on the practice field with two teams, it really you get more work done than Sunday afternoon, maybe? Yeah, um, I think it's because a lot of teams don't want to show a lot uh, on on tape uh, in, the, in the that. preseason games. Imagine that. But uh, in the practices, you're able to show a little bit, and most times it's not a team that's in your division or, you know, in the in the same conference. So you get a chance to do a lot of crossover work and you know go go go, go get some different faces. All right, let's talk about the Browns defense because. By the end of the year last year, it was that defensive unit that you were such a big part of were playing very, very well. And I know you've carried that and that knowledge and getting to know you factor. Now you know each other on the field because at this time last year, there was a lot of newness to it. Um, what is it going to be like this year? Yeah, um, you know, we want to take steps forward, um, obviously from last year. Uh, we want to start faster, number one. And, um, you know, like I said, at, like you said, at, at the end of the season, we were kind of rolling last year. We kind of want to get the ball off rolling the same way this year with, you know, starting the season off that way and uh, getting going. Like you said, a lot of the guys that building that continuity, um, understanding the system and everything like that, we should be playing at a much faster pace. Now, you play with a lot of young linebackers. J.O.K. is in his second year. Jacob Phillips is coming in, and he's still young in his NFL career. For that matter, Taki Taki mm -hmm. is still a young player. What's it like playing with so many young linebackers? Yeah, I feel like I'm young, and then I meet those guys, and I'm <laughs> old all of a sudden. And, uh, yeah, I, when I first came into the league, I was the youngest guy, and now I'm, you know, starting to get up there, you know, in years, uh, years of experience. So it's fun, man. Those guys, a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of energy. Um, they, they, their hunger for knowledge is great. Um, they want to be coached. Um, we have a great linebacker coach in Coach Tar, uh, who, who really pushes us, and that, that room is fun to be a, be, be a part of. Okay, as uh, you come down the stretch here, um, when you're a veteran like yourself, and you're getting ready for the season. Mm -hmm. Do you start counting the days until September 11th when you play in Carolina, and it's for real? No, I think uh, for me, I try to take it one day at a time. Um, I know there's a lot of things that I want to get accomplished before that. Um, I, I know that we want to get accomplished as a defense and as a team before that. So we try to make the days count and don't count the days. Um, you know, I know a lot of people say it, but I think we really put emphasis on that here. You know, And the coaches do a great job of installing and you know, scaling back and installing more on certain days just to, you know, kind of refocus us. And I think they're, they've done a good job with that. Boy, I'll tell you what, that, that's a great line. Okay, make the days count. Don't count the days. Um, all right, hey, good luck this season. No, I appreciate Thanks it. for being on the show. Thank you guys for having me. Go Anthony Browns. Anthony Watt, go Browns, absolutely.